I'm going to ask each of our panelists to introduce themselves and briefly tell you about their role in the blockchain, in particular smart cities and IoT um, ecosystem. We'll start with Dr. Sid. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, thanks, uh, Anthony, for uh, the invitation. And good to see you and good to see uh, all the great people. Uh, my name is Sid Ahmed Ben Rawan. I am an advisor on innovation to the government of Dubai. I am also uh, the chair of the US ISO uh, team uh, that is working on developing a standard on artificial intelligence and innovation uh, management system. Uh, as you may know, innovation and particularly exponential technologies mean a lot of things to a lot of people. ISO in recent years uh, took the charge to explain this framework and to put a set of standard uh, so people can talk and understand uh, each other. And I had uh, the great pleasure to be involved uh, in that. Fantastic. Dr. Mohammed. Thank you, Jimmy. Um, I am Mohammed Al Hamiri. I'm an academic uh, professor uh, in the University of Sharjah. Um, I have, um, uh, I'm also the head of the Technology Transfer Office, uh, which deals mainly with an emerging technologies, uh, protecting these technologies, R&D, uh, research outcomes, uh, commercializing the new technologies from the uh, academia side into the uh, industry as well. Uh, also, I'm helping in the outreach activities from, uh, to connect the uh, the industry with our uh, new technologies in the universities. Also, I'm uh, a big fan of the blockchain technologies, and uh, I'm ad advising on architecture level for uh, some companies in the region, and also uh, the, for the digital fabrication. Thank you. Fantastic, thank you. Simit. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Simit Nayak here, um, Director of Business Services at Enchain. Enchain is a uh, sort of global leader in blockchain technology, um, especially in the, in the fields of research and development. I look after a lot of the external engagements on behalf of Enchain, um, working with enterprise clients from across financial services, government, um, and also looking at um, a number of different kind of use cases for, for blockchain within IoT and supply chain. Okay, thank you. And Robert. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Robert Rice. I am the CEO of Transmira and uh, the chair of the XR Consortium. Uh, Transmira is developing a platform that basically takes uh, smart cities and data and turns them into augmented smart cities, basically monetizing uh, both augmented and virtual reality and uh, kind of ushering in a new dawn of how we uh, interact and relate to the environments around us. Okay, fantastic. Um, so let me ask this question to the panel, which is, you know, Smart cities will create lots of data, and then that data can be uh, recorded to or interacted with the blockchain. How can cities use that kind of technology to actually improve life for people in the communities? Uh, we'll start with Dr. Mohammed. Well, uh, the blockchain is a, is a really a great technology. It's allow... Um, uh, the transparency of data, which is very important nowadays, also uh, privacy uh, integrity of the data as well. And now, uh, because of the uh, huge amount of data generated, especially when IoT is in a place, we have everything connected. We have all devices, furnitures, tools, appliances. Now we are coming to the internet, it generates a lot of data. So. Um, now the big challenge is how to find the best and more uh, sufficient architecture to uh, digest this data into a useful meaning, also utilizing it into for the uh, benefit of the well-being. Uh, it's, uh, it's not an easy task. There are a lot of uh, challenges around this uh, uh, issue of uh, the big data uh, analysis and big data uh, 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 gener generating in data uh, or benefit useful information from this uh, uh, big data around the city. Um, now, uh, a lot of research for, uh, on, the t on the level of the university are working now, on, especially on the computing and informatics side, into how to uh, utilize this data, how to uh, uh, 
uh, find out the best architecture to uh, connect devices and also transfer data, keep the security of data and integrity and, and so on. Okay. Uh, Dr. Sid, you want to give us maybe some uh, concrete examples of how blockchain technology can improve a community? Uh, yes, uh, sure. But before that, let me uh, first of all uh, answer the following question. What's probably the most important value proposition of blockchain? Uh, this uh, panel, uh, there is a key word in the title, which is better communities. And it seems to me that we have not done a very good job in explaining those technologies and those applications to our communities. And that's why you see this semi-clash between technology and the people who are supposed to use it, who are supposed to adopt it. So to me, the most important proposition of blockchain is the concept of disintermediation. And when we talk about the concept of disintermediation, which in simple terms means removing the intermediaries, we're talking about macroeconomic implications and microeconomic implications. In other words, the more intermediary you remove in the transaction, the more efficient and the more cost effective uh, you become. If you bought a house, whether in Dubai or somewhere else, you probably have paid a lot of fees just for the fees of the transactions. In a blockchain ideal world, you wouldn't want to pay those fees, and that's a micro and a macroeconomic benefit uh, to you. It is also important for small and medium enterprises because with a blockchain technology, what you are doing, you are lowering the barrier to the entry, which means you are making it easy for entrepreneurs, you are making it easy for small, and small companies to get into the economic um, activities. The challenge, Jimmy, with the blockchain technology is that the killer app, which is the cryptocurrency, which was supposed to prove the concept of uh, blockchain, has been hijacked by big players, and now big players are using cryptocurrency as a store for value, yep. rather than as a mean to actually encourage people to engage into transactions and to into uh, dealing. Totally agree with you. It's what we're trying to change with Bitcoin SV. Yes, actually, exactly. You can have a coin that's actually used in daily life as opposed to uh, you know, big companies buying up huge reserve amounts of Bitcoin like MicroStrategy and just parking it in a reserve and not actually using it. Yes, totally agree. And, and that's the challenge. So for me, uh, the more you open, you simplify the technology for the community, the better involvement and the better monetization you see in uh, this uh, technology. Um, all right, let's go to Simit. So I showed Simit, you know, in my little presentation right before this, that video capture of Singapore's traffic system. And there's a company in Cambridge, United Kingdom, called uh, GeoSpock, which has an extreme scale database solution to help companies and organizations deal with that huge amount of data. And I know they're talking with Enchain about collaboration um, with blockchain. Can you tell us how blockchain technology can help a city deal with all of that data? Yeah, sure. Um, so, so Geospock's uh, kind of main focus is on geospatial data. So uh, within Singapore, they're capturing a significant amount of data related to the movement of cars, the movement of goods, and also to help with um, the kind of understanding of services. And so um, Geospock's platform is an extreme scale database. And so what it does, it allows you to, to do very rapid analytics on top. The conversations we're having in terms of where blockchain can help are um, in, in two key areas. One is the blockchain gives you a very secure and a very transparent way of maintaining data integrity. So we can use a blockchain to ensure the integrity of the data that exists within the geospatial database. The second is um, Geospot captures data about events. Now, every event itself um, has the potential to be valuable information. Right. But secondly, those events themselves trigger other events, and those events may be payment events. And so what we're using the blockchain to do is to add the payments layer on top and allow us to use the event data that's being captured via you know, sensors within Singapore to then trigger payments. So every time you drive a car down a road, 
rather than having to pay a yearly toll or a yearly kind of tax, you pay per use. And all of that can be done in real time, directly on the blockchain. The fact that um, the blockchain that we use, which is Bitcoin SV, allows us to do micropayments, means it's possible for us to, to do payments of fractions of a cent or, or lower at every single event, which makes it possible for us to be able to do real-time payments with real-time event data. So you could have a system, for example, where you have a Bitcoin SV wallet associated with, let's say, your sensor device in your car, and you're paying for every kilometer, right? And it's just automatically ducted as, as you drive. That's right, um, yeah. pay per use, if you like. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and what blockchain does is it gives you a different way of understanding um, payments, but also gives you a different way of, of looking at revenue and business models. The fact that you can now do um, micropayments, and micropayments are a very significant level, you know, fractions of a cent, gives you the possibility of, of doing things like pay per use. And, and we're seeing that in um, supply chain as well. So supply chain is another big area for, for IoT devices, you know, capturing data around um, origins of food, food while it's in transport. And you can use that data to then generate invoices and payments at every step of the supply chain process. All right, Robert, um, to our AV team back there, if you could put up the slides. Robert has a few things to show because his company is so visual. You are an AR and VR company, so I'll move the slides for you. you want to tell us about Omniscape, your platform, quickly. Uh, yeah, so, so Omniscape is, uh, is basically designed to blend you know, both augmented and virtual reality together uh, with, a, with a strong emphasis on location. Um, when you think about these really cool technologies and you know, holograms and you know, virtual goods and all these, these experiences, um, without having location giving you a sense of context and relevance, it's just novelty. But when you bring in the location and then you start uh, underpinning it with other you know, core technologies like, like blockchain, you suddenly start getting uh, some real value and you can drive uh, you know, some world-changing experiences that can you know, pretty much affect almost every uh, industry and sector that, that's out there. Um, uh, here's an example of a few different things where uh, whether it's you know, 3D holograms that are interactive, you know, I got a cute little dinosaur up there, or maybe uh, an avatar that's a customer service agent that can interact with you and, and give you a you know, guided tour or tips, um, virtual goods to drive uh, consumers to businesses or to help them you know, manage and moderate traffic at conferences, or even um, what we like to call digital twins where you can do a 3D reconstruction of a building or of a venue that people remotely can kind of log into with a browser or with virtual reality and explore and experience it, but also interact with people that are on site in location using augmented reality. And you know, these three together, uh, I think are really gonna change the way we think about and perceive what smart cities are, as well as dealing with issues like, like COVID now, where the remote access is important, as well as when the COVID restrictions lift, and businesses and venues and sports and whatever need ways to drive, uh, you know, people and tourists and consumers back to back to business and spending money. Um, of course, uh, you know, enabling all of this in, in a good way that's scalable um, as well as trustable, especially when we start aggregating and tapping into um, the rich world of data around us. Blockchain is, is critical for ensuring that uh, it's safe, it's secure, it's trusted. You know that whatever you know, hologram or experience you're interacting with uh, is backed up and is valid uh, and isn't um, you know, a copy or, or you know, fraudulent or whatever. Um, and, uh, so our, our basic overall thesis is uh, there's, we're, we're in data-rich environments. Um, there's a tremendous amount of data. But with what we're doing, we're going from the data to information to knowledge and then ultimately experience. And this kind of obviously leads into this idea of spatial computing where I'm not necessarily sitting on my phone or in front of a desktop, but I'm literally engaging with the world around me uh, through data and spatial means. Um, and that's what we're, we're working on. Got it. So you'll be typing on computers in air one day? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That, that, that's <laughs> to, totally coming very soon. I think uh, there's, there's certainly a bit of a you know, hype in the industry, but I think people will be surprised at how fast some of this is going to be occurring in the next maybe uh, you know, 12 to 18 months. There are, there's a lot of uh, pretty amazing things that are about to be launched. 
Okay, thank you. I think we can be done with the presentation now. Thank you. Um, so let's go back to um, Dr. Mohammed. Tell us about any projects that are going on at your university in the blockchain and smart cities IoT space. All right, yes. Um, first of all, as you know, um, UAE, uh, UAE government is one of uh, like the first government who assign uh, Minister of AI. It also launch, they launched in early time the Dubai uh, Blockchain Center as well to uh, empower the government yes. uh, uh, services using the blockchain-based applications and uh, so on, like the, the whole country was really involved into uh, enhancing and, uh, 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 and development of blockchain technologies. And uh, here in the Oral University, we, uh, we also form uh, re focus research groups on the blockchain and IoT uh, and AI. It also uh, launched a lot of projects with collaboration with industry and other international universities on the blockchain architecture. Uh, also uh, secure uh, blockchain uh, ecosystem and so on and so forth. Uh, we have also the research, uh, blockchain research center as well, which is, contains a number of uh, 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 researchers and faculty and master students and PhD students as well who are working on the, uh, research uh, related to uh, blockchain and, uh, and blockchain security and architecture as well. Uh, Dubai Electronics uh, uh, and uh, uh, Dubai Electronics uh, Security Systems as well. Uh, they have funded some number of projects for the Dubai, Dubai government with uh, uh, our university to enhance the services and also the security and integrity of the firmware and uh, uh, avoid any manipulation to IoT uh, uh, devices uh, using the blockchain technology. Um, uh, like in general in UAE, like for example, um, um, in, in 2000, uh, 15, uh, the, the government launched uh, an, an effort, an initiative to, to convert into blockchain technologies most of the services in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the city. Uh, there was more than 100 million documents per year that was uh, converted into digital and into the blockchain now. So this, what does this mean? It's, it means more than uh, 25 million hours, working hours of, uh, 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 per year from uh, 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 cut from uh, or the manpower was uh, done by a manpower and also equivalent to uh, uh, 1.5 billion dollar per year uh, saving uh, by using and adopting the blockchain uh, technology. There will be uh, no need for uh, the uh, uh, lawyers, uh, attorneys, public notaries to verify documents anymore uh, since there will be, the data will be on the blockchain and, the, uh, and will be verified using the blockchain. So there are a lot of efforts here and also uh, in the airport, for example, as one of the examples, now uh, all the passport will be digitalized and also stored uh, with a visa, inter visa, visit visa also will be on the blockchain. So that will really uh, um, facilitate the entry in UAE and, and, and exit as well from uh, all the airport. There will be no uh, 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 issues of like uh, a queues for security check or something. It will be very seamless entry and uh, enter in and, 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 uh, and exit as well. So there are a lot of uh, uh, examples I, we can mention later. Fantastic. Uh, let's go back to Dr. Sid. So you expressed your very strong opinion, which I agree with, that the cryptocurrency world got hijacked by some big players and uh, undermined Bitcoin, BTC's ability to be used as a currency. Um, now that you are advising the Dubai government, how would you advise also companies to interact with government to try and develop a digital currency ecosystem that is useful as payments and data for smart cities and IoT usage? Um, I think uh, we are very lucky to be in Dubai and to be in the UAE uh, because this is one of the most uh, progressist uh, countries when it comes to uh, digital transformation and technology uh, adoption. Uh, the UAE and particularly Dubai government has been investing in developing this uh, innovation and digital transformation ecosystem for more than 25 years uh, now. 
And uh, an example of that is the seamlessness uh, in which Dubai government and the UAE government has been able to manage this health crisis. Uh, that we have been able, in fact, to move the entire UAE economy to a cloud um, uh, environment uh, within a few weeks. Most, most of schools uh, around the UAE were able actually to quickly uh, move to uh, online education, particularly because the infrastructure uh, was here. Um, I think what I would tell um, my friends and my colleagues in small and medium enterprises and companies is to have a true value proposition. And that value proposition needs to have two elements. Number one, a long-term view, what exactly you are going to do for the UAE government, what exactly you are going to do for the Dubai government, but more importantly is sustainability. Uh, I think times where you simply come, sell, and go, those are gone. Uh, the world is more open. Uh, the digital uh, world is more transparent. Uh, and therefore, it doesn't help you to hide behind borders or to hide behind going back to your country. Uh, people will always know what type of company, what type of management, what type of thought, what type of idea you are. So it is critical that in your value proposition, you emphasize the long term and you emphasize the sustainability. Um, selling and buying, I think those are, everybody can do them. And if you want to differentiate yourself, then uh, this is what I would suggest uh, for you. Thank you. Simit, um, we've talked about how blockchain, if used correctly with the scale chain, can have data that's monetized. Um, how can cities as well as private enterprises use monetized data incentives to incentivize better behavior of citizens when it comes to, for example, uh, environmental sustainability? I think the, the more we capture um, data, the more we understand the value of that data. Um, you can make better decisions, you can try and identify trends, but you can also try and identify um, how to better, you know, um, like you say, incentivize citizens to, to um, you know, partake in environmental um, initiatives, sustainability, um, and, and and the way you do that is 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 just like the blockchain itself. You incentivize good behavior. So rather by than thinking, or re rewarding by paying exactly. Bitcoin yeah. or rewards points. That's yeah, exactly. And 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 the fact um, that blockchains and you know things like Bitcoin SV allow you to do things like micropayments. It sort of changes the way you think about payments. So the fact that you can start paying people, you know, a cent or two cents or even a fraction of a cent for every good or in, incentivized behavior is a game changer, right? Um, so just for example, like we, every time I close my refrigerator door, the sensor yeah. could or pay me a half off. cent through yeah. Bitcoin because I did, you know, I remember to close yeah. the refrigerator door That's and right. save the electricity. Yeah, or when you switch your lights off uh, when you leave the room. You know, everything generates data and data itself can provide better insights and for everything that you do, you can be incentivized to, to act in the best way possible. Yeah. Um, and that's only possible with two, you know, two kind of um, concepts that Bitcoin SV brings. One is the ability to capture all of that data and the second is to have a, an incentive mechanism that allows you to um, do things like micropayments because small deeds may only yes. account for small payments right. but collectively it helps to deliver a far better way of, of trying to incentivize, incentivize good behavior. Right. Um, so Robert, we'll go back to you. So how do you envision AR and VR technology with blockchain uh, being able to contribute to a smart city and community that incentivizes better behavior? Um, so so there's, there's, a, there's a few different ways. Uh, uh, one, I'll, I guess I'll start with that kind of um, ties back to like some climate change and whatever. When you've got uh, a lot of sensors and data, uh, you know, being generated throughout a city that might be tracking, um, you know, pollution or you know weather or whatever, uh, being able to take all of that and help visualize it and make it useful and interesting to the community, they can learn things about their environment and change their behaviors. Uh, maybe you know something pollution is high today, so I'll dial down and do something else or you know some other sort of thing. Um, or you know from um, from a, from a commerce perspective. There's ways where 
uh, we, we could tie all this together and help people, uh, you know, drive business back to smaller businesses, or maybe uh, you want to spread like tourism traffic from one city to three or four different cities in an area and kind of stimulate the, the economy. Um, these types of technologies can be used to, you know, help you do that and, and understand it, both from a management perspective or from, uh, you know, a ground up consumer or tourist perspective. Where should I go today? What do I want to learn about? How do I experience these, these, uh, these environments? Um, and you know, there, there's other use cases as well, whether it's uh, uh, you know, tourism or, or even education or um, you, you know, training. I mean, there's just so many different ways, but being able to take it all from, uh, from the, the sensors to the, uh, you know, the, the blockchain um, you know, integrity and security and privacy, all the way up through that, that experiential piece um, really becomes a way for people to understand uh, their world, their city, their home, their town. Uh, way better and have um, better access to knowledge that can ultimately you know, change their behaviors. Uh, one last example I'll use in, in my own home, uh, home city of, of Raleigh, North Carolina, there's a lot of uh, construction going on and they always want community feedback before they put up a new stadium or a new building or something. And it's generally very hard getting people to give them that feedback. But with something like AR and VR, we can do these amazing um, uh, visualizations, like maybe we want to put in a new bus stop somewhere. Well, with AR, you can see what it would look like at the location, but you can go there yourself and interact with it and go, oh, I like this, I don't like it, maybe it needs to be somewhere else or it's blocking my view. And that helps with the community engaging with the local government as well as, um, you know, construction and planning. Okay, our time's up, so I'm going to ask the panelists to, in 30 seconds or less, give this audience of investors, government representatives, and private companies What's the best advice you'd give to how they could contribute to uh, the advancement of IoT and smart cities with blockchain? I think start now because this is a very good buy-in opportunity and it's while the world is a little bit slow, this is your best uh, time to get in. Yeah, uh, uh, same as Professor Said said, this is a really, the really good time. Uh, UAE uh, is the, really the, the right place to establish such a uh, uh, business uh, here in the in the country related to, especially to the blockchain technologies and also the uh, uh, crypto asset as well. Maybe you heard about the new uh, the, uh, laws comes to regulate the tokenizations of uh, uh, the uh, security assets, which is uh, will open up for a great opportunity for SMSEs and also for the corporates to tokenize their services and also uh, having it regulated into uh, the UAE, and there are much more to come. Simit. Um, think about data as a, as a commodity. Think about it as a valuable commodity, and focus on not only investing in those businesses that allow us to, to capture, store, and analyze that, that data, but also how we can monetize that data, because it is going to be the most important commodity of the 21st century. We're at the dawn of a new uh, shift or, or, or change in paradigms, uh, and COVID has, has vastly accelerated a lot of different things. I think uh, now is the time for, for early adopters to get in and take advantage of the, a, a, a tidal wave of new technology and new things that are coming out now, and those that get in early and adopt it will become leaders that everybody else will follow, uh, and then that kind of positions those early people to really dominate the next generation of tech and information and media and the world around us. Well, thank you. I want to thank all these leaders in the blockchain space for joining us on this panel, and I hope you've learned something about how this community and communities all around the world can be better with blockchain technology. Thank you very much.